Hello, it has been weeks since I have had a chance to work on any art down here in my studio uh, where I work on my pan pastels. I've showed you these before. You can see a few up here. They're, they're, they come in color sets. I think I've explained this before, but this is the ultramarine blue. This is the pure ultramarine color. This is the tint, so it's if you were painting, you would add white to get the tint. This is a shade, which means there's been some black added, but it's a darker of this. And then this is the extra dark shade. So each of these affords me different colors of the same color. So there's, for every color in the set of Pan Pastels, that's the true uh, color, ultramarine blue, there is a tint, a shade, and an extra dark shade. You can purchase pan pastels, pastels in sets that are geared towards doing landscape art or doing um, portraits, or you can collect all the colors as I have done. Um, there are 20 colors, 20 tints, 20 shades, 20 extra darks. I started by just ordering a couple because I was testing them. A friend artist of mine was using them in her portrait work and her animal portrait work underneath colored pencils and pastel pencils and I was intrigued so I just ordered a few of the colors that were flesh tones then I fell in love with them and I asked for the portrait set for Christmas then I realized I had gone about it all wrong and I ordered asked for the the sets of 20 of each color which is your best buy it's $80 for a set of 20 it's 320 if you buy the whole set at once and that's 80 little tins plus there's black white there's some Payne's gray so I have a lot of colors here um, but there are 20 colors so it's pan pastel is the name this tools are soft art sponge here and you can see it says pan pastel down in the bottom uh, very much these have become my favorite medium lately because it's like painting uh, but it's erasable and I can add other mediums, which I am more and more a multimedia artist. I do still enjoy working in oils and acrylics and um, other mediums, but I very much enjoy the painty, painterly uh, technique combined with the ability to erase and add in details with a, with a colored pencil or a pastel pencil. So what I'm working on here is this piece. It will be the front cover of my first uh, coloring book. I started doing these, these Bible verses. My mother-in-law passed away August 1st, and that's why you haven't seen any videos from me on YouTube lately because we were a little busy being with her. She was on hospice, she was in the hospital. So since mid-June, I have had other more important things to take care of. And then the, the aftermath of, of different things, which is absolutely fine. Don't, don't suspect that I am complaining. We all reach the end of our lives and it was a, a joy, not a joy really, it was hard, hard to do, but it was an honor, I guess is the word, to be able to be a part of helping someone as they walk home, as they head to heaven. So, um, and she was a believer and knew without a doubt that where she was headed and it was still hard and there was pain, but she had her family around her and we were able to be there with her. But she enjoyed seeing my artwork of the Bible verses I was drawing. And the two days before she passed, she asked me, asked if she could see my pictures again. And I had a sketch pad I was working in. It was almost full of different Bible verses. And so I would go through them with her and show them to her and she would smile. And she couldn't talk a lot at the end. She was suffering from advanced Parkinson's. And she looked right at me and said, draw me a picture. And so I flipped through my verses that I had written down of ones I was going to do drawings of. And I picked this one. And I got the sketch done that day, but it was a little hard for her to see because it was just in pencil. And then I immediately kept working on the ink. I did finish it, uh, but by the time I finished it, she was um, no longer opening her eyes and interacting with us. So um, 
she didn't get to see it while she was here, but I am dedicating this first coloring book to her because she enjoyed my Bible verse drawings so much and they were an encouragement to her. So this one is going to be the front cover. I think the first book is going to be called Lamp and Light. Uh, so, because that's what his word is to us and the, the whole coloring book is, I'm going to erasing some pencil lines, is Bible verses, which are a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So that's what this one is. So this one is getting colored sooner rather than later. All the Bible verses in the coloring book will eventually be greeting cards. I'll get color on them. So it's kind of a long explanation just to get started here. What I'm doing is I'm preparing this. I'm erasing any pencil lines. I sketch my artwork first. Then I come back over it with Micron pens. I like the Micron brand. There are other brands, but I do like it. I find once you find a brand you like, stick with that brand because believe it or not, the blacks can be slightly different. So if I go to a wider ink uh, pen for the thicker things, believe it or not, that, that black could be a little different and that can affect your work. So I love these Micron pens. This is a 005, so it makes thin, thin lines. They are waterproof, which is good because I sometimes work in water-based uh, art or mediums. They are archival, and so I just really like them, and they last quite a while if you don't leave the lids off. So they come in many little sizes. That's a whole other uh, video, but that's what I've done the work in. You let it dry really well, and then you can erase the pencil out, and I'm not seeing. It seems like every time I look, I see another another pencil line. So these black lines aren't going to be as prominent because the pan pastel can be rather loose. So I'm just going to start. The good thing is pan pastels erase out. So if I go over things, I can erase out and go back over different areas to give more emphasis say, to the words. So I'm just going to get started here. I've got all my tools laid out from previous projects. I literally just keep them like that. And then as I get too bogged down with pastel, I'll wash these sponge tips that come off and all these little makeup sponges. But I have so many different colors going that it works well. I just pick up the sponge and use the side that has the color that I intend on using. So I have quite a bit, they're off camera, but that's what I have, that's what I'm grabbing when you see me reach off. And then I have, I'm gonna pan this just a little if I can. See all the colors? That's not even all of them, but that's quite a few. There's a few over there, there's an orange. I can't get this to move very well. There is a, some oranges and peaches and some more greens. So that's what I'm working with. Let me get this turned back around and get this wire out of the way. And get you set up so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So if you see me reach off camera, that's what I'm doing. I'm reaching for a tool or I'm re reaching for a... Uh, that's a mess over here again. Um, I have kneaded erasers that I use, but I have to make sure that there isn't color in them that's going to smear onto. Did you see that? Onto it, there's a little hunk of color in it. So I have to be careful. I have brown paper laid out that I can use to clean my tools on, that I can erase off. I have some cardboard over here. And um, anyway, that's what I do. So I'm going to get started here and see where we're at. Try to keep an eye on how much time I'm talking so I don't have too long of a video for you. So I'm going to get started with just some background here and I kind of feel like this would be green because this is a grass. There really isn't a sky behind this so we're going to start out with a green, uh, maybe a greenish blue. Um, so then I have to decide which greens do I want. I kind of like some of these here. And the names of the colors are upside down on here, but this is a chromium oxide green that I'm gonna be using to start with. Let's see what I think as I go. So one thing I wanna be thinking of is the leaves of the morning glory are going to have, I'm just gonna go right over this word because I'll put new color on top, either with these or with the pastel pencils later. I'm just gonna run through all of this try to keep it off the flowers, but I can erase. I can erase that out. So it's not terrible. The only thing I want to be considering is it's going to look messy before it looks nice. 
only thing I really need to be considering is what green will I then use for the morning glory leaves? It would be a different green than the green I'm using here, just so that it shows. Maybe I didn't want that much dark, but I can lighten it. See, you can put light right on top. I could add a little bit of a, more of a golden, see, and some yellow to change that green up or to give it some interest. So I'm basically, I'm just putting this background in until I feel like it looks the way I want it to look. So, I know, it looks terrible. Oh my gosh, I'm going all over everything. But if I don't put the background in so that it looks like it's flowing the way it should, it's not gonna look like it's flowing the way it should. So, I'm having to just like if I was if I was painting this, say with oils or um, acrylics or even a watercolor, well, watercolor I could put the ink on, but if I was painting this, I would put my background in before I came in with the path and the light and the words, and the background would be in the background. That's why it's called a background. But let me put a lighter green back behind this flame. Since this inking is already on here can't go behind it. Now, I, yes, technically, I guess I could have put that on first, but the method I use is pencil, then ink. And if I had this background, anytime I erased, I would erase this background because these are erasable. So it wouldn't really, it just wouldn't work to put this background on because I have to erase out that pencil after I do the inking. So it's just not going to work. So the method I'm using is the method I'm using which is fine. I will show you something here as soon as I get this kind of the way I want. I've decided yet yeah, this path, if it's gonna be a rock path, if it's gonna be grass, don't know. That's why I'm covering it all. Not worried about this because that's a lamp and it's gonna get another color, but look what I can do. Got it all over my hands. And come in with this eraser. I'm gonna lay down a piece of tracing paper so I don't get my skin oils on here and I don't smudge it off. But I can lay this down and I can erase that out. See how I erase that out? I can erase this out. Now I could, if I put a darker color on top, I don't really need to erase that out, but I might need to. So I'm just showing you that I can. Now it does get into the tooth of the paper to an effect. So it's never going to probably completely erase to white if I put a dark color down. See this? And even Mr. Bird here, he's going to need. And these flowers, I'm not sure what I'm putting in them yet. But Morning Glories are typically a bright blue. I might put some purple in, but I've got to be careful because I just got that background. So see, I can erase out the parts I need to. So I'm gonna stop erasing because I'm not sure I'm done with the background and then I would just have to erase some more. I just wanted to show you what is possible with these. So I'm gonna add a little more other color. Now I also have pen, not pan pastel, I have pen, I have pastel pencils. I keep saying the word pan. I have pastel pencils that I will also be using to put in some of the details. So that's coming in another step. So, get some dark here. I'd like to have kind of a light area as it's, I wanna get that lamp to glow. Let me get this kind of softened out. Oh, evidently there's some brown on there. Oh well, that'll be all right because, I mean, I can try and erase that out a bit but there will be a glow of, of uh, warm light through there. Probably the last thing I'll do is pull some, pull some orangish glowing light across so you can see the lamp lighting. <clears throat> Again, layers, <coughs> excuse me. Alrighty, I think I might be done with this little background. Let's add a little more. 
I love these makeup sponges. They're some of the nicer makeup sponges you can buy. Um, here's another one, the real soft ones. I do not like the hard cornered uh, soft tools just because I tend to work nature. But if you were someone who worked a lot of hard edges, like maybe you did landscapes and buildings, these would be beautiful because they do make a, a line. And if I'm doing something like this that's a line, some of these sharp edge tools work. So there's oodles of tools for your use. Um, you can even purchase makeup sponges. These are the rectangular ones. I don't use them as much, but sometimes I do. So I have a, a whole lot of tools. In fact, let me show you. I found this at a thrift store for $2. It's a makeup thing, but it works perfect for these tools. Two bucks. So yeah, thrift stores are awesome. Alrighty, let me get a little more of this more golden. I kept this edge so I can hold it. I don't, I don't like to, ooh, I like that. I don't like to, let's get some of the super light. I don't like to touch the edges. Now this is 11 by 14, so when it gets framed, it'll take up a quarter inch. So I could technically touch the very edge, but I'm also going to be photographing this when it's completely done and I don't want some weird little fingerprints. So I've taped down the edge and I've kept the fringe. Now there's some art paper I use that doesn't have that. So I just have to have, I'll tape down the edges and then maybe use, you know, just make sure it's about a quarter inch, which would be what a frame would take up. And then that's what I do. So I'm just gonna, just a little yellow, not a lot, because like I said, I want to come in with a golden light and then that would kind of clash, but I just love that little hint of light coming through here. And then I might put a darker green. So the orange, the dark green, the light green, but using this rounded edge to soften up edges makes it makes it nice. So that's what I'm doing here. Kind of liking that. I like to also look through the camera. I video with my phone suspended above the work and I can just look down the brackets in the way a little, but I can see enough of it to see if I like what I'm seeing. I've also been found looking at your work through a photograph so photograph it with your phone and look at your work and see if you see any glaring errors. It's, it's weird how our brain works. Our brain knows to believe a photo, but it doesn't always believe what it sees with the naked eye. So, but it does believe a photo. We've been trained to think that photos are, are believable. And I mean, come on, we have Photoshop. They're really not believable. Okay, I really like this. And now I'm going to take this eraser, see all the yuck on it, and it's on my hands too, so I should wash my hands because I'm just putting this in here, but I'm going to knead this eraser. That's why it's called kneaded. You knead it like bread. Take my tracing paper again. Um, haven't decided, like I said, I think I might use my pastel pencils to put like a rocky texture on this path. Um, and I'm going to... Trace out a bit of the overlap of color on the flowers and the morning glory leaves. Just so that when I lay the other color on, it doesn't affect that color. Now, if the color was absolutely saturated behind, not saturated, but completely covering each and every leaf in the same way, it wouldn't hurt to just leave it there, but there's also the issue of tooth. Tooth is the texture of the paper, and tooth is what the pastel dust basically clings to. And if you are, if you use up your tooth, you're done. Um, sometimes you can spray it with a workable fix to give you a little more tooth time, <laughs> but it may or may not be enough. So I erase off, oopsie daisy, went too far. Erase off part of this 
and it's underneath. I'm not really too worried about the lamp post because it's gonna get, I think probably like a Payne's gray. It's gonna get a darker, now this is getting saturated. Turn it and twist it and you can mold this into small pieces. Um, kneaded erasers work amazingly with pencil, with pan pastel, to an extent with colored pencil, but not really well with colored pencil. Colored pencil is more waxy and it's makeup and it doesn't tend to erase well with a kneaded eraser. I have an electric eraser that I use if I really need to erase out. And I could use it here too. In fact, it's a chargeable one and I need to to charge it. I haven't used it and it is dead. I checked it the other day. So I need to charge that puppy up. So if I need, see how I obliterated that background? So I know I said the thing about the oils, but sometimes I still end up doing a little bit of rubbing with my finger. I try to keep that to a minimum. Again, we have oils on our skin, even if we've just washed them. Now, the good news is, is I probably have so much dust on my fingers right now that I'm not really adding much oil. So now I'm looking over and I'm seeing some lines here that don't look natural. So I'm gonna take, there's a little bit of this pale, pale yellow. And I'm just gonna kind of use it as a, a buffer kind of thing, a blender, if you will. Oopsie daisy, that's kind of looking strange. I might just have to get a clean one out. I don't really have many clean ones right now. That's <laughs> probably why I should wash some. Seems like I'm always working on a project and they can these big ones can take a few days to dry and if they're wet, they're not gonna work. Okay, now I have learned from another friend of mine. She's a pastel artist that, who's a neighbor. She said she takes, I think she said a solvent. Um, and puts it over the pastels. Notice I'm keeping my hand off. I'm resting it on the sponge. Uh, so I'm gonna be covered in pastel by the time I'm done. There's my arm. Um, okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that background. I like that. I like that there's just enough dark green. Um, maybe a little more. If there's a little darker colors than the light will pop out more. Oh, I missed erasing a leaf. So I look at that and you know what I'm finding here? I didn't get down in between and find something that has that green on it. I didn't get down in between here. So that's where you need these little tools. Now you can see I've got some smallish areas in here with these leaves. So I'm going to have to put highlights and details in with my pastel pencils that my, the beautiful set my husband gave me for my birthday and have not had time since then. My birthday was the 5th of July. I haven't had time to, to play with, really, because we've been spending a lot of time with mother-in-law. So that's life, right? Okay, where's that leaf I didn't erase out? Oh dear, where'd it go? There it is. Okay, any others I missed? Doo -doo. Where's that green one I just laid down? Oh, come on. There it is. There, that looks good. Anything else I missed? I still think this could be a little darker down here. I want to blend that so it doesn't just look like, oh, it's suddenly darker and then the leaf moves and it's lighter again. So I want to kind of blend this so it looks natural back in here. So let's do a little of that. Details can be brought in later, like I said, with my pastel. There, that kind of blends things nicely. There we go. Well, so far that's good. I think I like that. And then, 
See, these little guys will give me the ability to do lines and such too, so that'll be good. Alrighty, I think, I think I like that. Let's do one like a little dark up in here. And then we have a lighter area. It's beautiful how the white, the light colors can just be laid right on top of those darker ones. Well, for now, that's probably good. See what I might want to do later. Keep my tracing paper handy. Now, where are we? Wow, we've been on here 25 minutes already. Um, let's see, what do we want to do next? Let's play with these leaves. So, here is another piece of paper. So, this is what I already got down is that. The other greens I have at my disposal are this one and I have that one and I have all the olivey green. I'm not sure about that one but I'm kind of thinking this one with maybe a tad bit of this, and I can also add some yellow. So probably this green family here, which is the permanent green. And of course, like I said, we have tint, we have solid. So what I'll start doing is I'll just kind of work my way down. And I'll probably end this video before I get too far with these. But I can come in with these. this color. Now that overlapped, maybe add a little bit of a that. Still not loving that. Let's get the darker one in here. Hmm. Not loving that. Hmm. Not loving that at all. It's really not, not my thing not making me happy. So instead, what's this one over here? This is the felt of green. I wonder if I put a little felt of green on top of that, if it'd be more what I'm after. Now that actually, that's popping a little. I like that popping a little better. Now what happens if I come in and I just use that? See, I've got some edges. I'll deal with that later. That, or I won't care. Yep, yeah. yeah, too much. Put that over there. Let's just blend that in. And let's do a little of this. There we go. Probably come back later and fix all those. Okay, let's see. A little bit of this. So this is that, did I say Falto Green? That's what I said. Falto, PH. Artists never make it easy on you. We don't name things logically, we don't spell things right. We're artists. So, that's the way it goes. Yeah, maybe. Still kind of. Ooh, I like that a little better. Got a little bit of white on there. Not white, but it's the tint of that Velto. I kind of like that better. I like that a little better. So, so that's what I'm going to play with. So I'm going to come along and work on these leaves. I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably work on these leaves off camera rather than make you watch me do all of these silly leaves. But I'll work on them off camera. And if I've changed the way I do them, I will save some for the beginning of the next video. And then we'll get in there on the flowers and other pieces. So where we'll start. So yeah, I'll, I won't bore you with having to watch all of these details because I think there's going to need to be some 
I don't know, might even have to get in here with this dark, dark, the extra dark shade. It almost looks black. Think like dark grayish green. I wonder if a little bit of it for some shadow might give these leaves a hint of shape. And then come in with the tint. Yeah, that seems to be a little better. Another thing I could play with is a whole other new sponge. What kind of new? It's got a little bit of something on there. Is there's a bluish kind of aqua over here. Just a little hint of that. Not. I like that. I kind of like that tint of just a touch of blue. So let me do that on these real quick. Let's see if that, I know, it looks terrible. Till, I come in with the light. And, mm -hmm. much of that dark on there. And then come in with a little of this blue. Notice too, some of my black lines get faded, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. Kind of liking that little bit of blue, and I'm gonna put a tiny bit more of the dark. Oh yeah, there we go. That's giving it a more of a leaf shape. These are tiny, so I'm blowing off the dust here. And then come in with the light again to just swing through a couple of highlights. And then as I showed you earlier, when it gets overshot, then they come back in. So you kind of got to keep your wits about you as to which of these little tools did I dip in which green? Now, one trick to that is if I lay this on the pen pastel piece where I'm working, then I know this is for these greens. This is for this aqua blue. This is the blue I put in, that aqua blue in there. And then this was the other green I've been using for those leaves. So I'm kind of happy with that. I'm looking at it thinking that might be my system on these so you can see the different Different colors I'm going with. Feels like that needs a bit more shadow. And pull that up. There. Going in the direction the leaf exists. I'm thinking a little more deep shadow on some of these might be the trick. So yeah, this one doesn't have any. So that's what I'm going to do. You can see it's fairly tedious, so I will work on that off camera and show you the results when I get started on the flowers here in a little while and get back with you. Thanks for watching.